Welcome, everybody, to Midday Magazine for this Friday, August 16th, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mailoff here. In part two, we're going to speak with Reverend Caleb McGregor from the uh, Port Edwards United Methodist Church, talk about their community trivia night and benefit for the Family Center that they have coming up. But right now, joining us on the phone lines, our friend Senator Patrick Teston from Wisconsin State Senate District Number 24. Good morning. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, James. How are you? I'm doing all right. Uh, how have you been? Staying busy. It's uh, everyone's favorite season in Wisconsin right now, and I'm not talking summer. It's campaign season. <laughs> uh, I, I want to get into that with you and uh, a couple of other really interesting things. Appreciate the notes that you sent over. We'll touch on those topics and some more. But if you don't mind, sir, I want to rewind for a second to Tuesday and the election results. What are your takes from uh, the results that we got uh, Wednesday morning? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, we, we had some primary elections as well as a uh, two questions regarding to a constitutional amendment and um you know to be completely honest and blunt i i'm not surprised to see the referendum questions fail there was a a lot of money and effort went into uh having individuals vote no on those questions despite the fact that you know myself across the finish line and just to clarify a couple things because i had a lot of confusion and i certainly heard this when i was going door to door in the lead up to the primary is that a lot of people had concerns that this was going to impact emergency funds and disaster relief like from storms or floods and that simply wasn't the case but either way you know the amendments went down and um i guess the the silver lining of this all is that you know in response to uh, these questions being on the ballot, a lot of that money that the governor had been sitting on from uh, COVID relief, a good chunk of that's been spent down now. And so I think the governor only has roughly about uh, just shy of $300 million, uh, can, that remains in, in a, a special account that he can use to allocate those resources for for various projects. It would be nice to have some legislative oversight, but, uh, you know, the voters spoke and, and – uh, our status quo is going to remain as is until something changes. Uh, with that being said, uh, you know, eventually, uh, maybe next month when we talk, uh, we can get a little more in depth in some of those topics there. But one of the things I uh, take talking about silver lining, sir, one, the direction I wanted to go was the idea that 26 percent of eligible voters voted in this election, the most since I believe the uh, 60s or even before that. Uh, that is no matter what party you're representing. Those are great numbers. And it's great to see the the, the Wisconsin and Wisconsinites out there and getting out there and voting. Um, I think that that's noteworthy. I think that that stands out uh, almost above anything else, really, and outside of, of course, the results. But I, I would like to touch on just one really quick thing, and, and I'm going to take this opportunity every chance I get, so I apologize, sir. But I feel like we have to get past the idea of winning and losing an election. You, you can't lose something the American people choose. Like I, if they chose it, well, okay, that that was their choice. They went that direction. You, you, it's it's the job of a politician to do what their constituents ask. So if that's the direction they go, they they you got to trust the people. You have to go with what the people want. Yeah, no, I, I think that's fair, and you know, and you know, in large part, I I think you know the messaging on our side as it related to the referendum questions could have been stronger and better, but you know we. We're dealing with an issue where we didn't have the resources to uh, get that message out. As I was telling someone yesterday down at the Juneau County Fair, because they had questions about, you know, why the referendum questions didn't go through. I said, look, you know, half of the Senate's up right now. And, you know, we are doing what we can, but, you know, we don't have the ability to, and 99 state representatives are up for re-election. We don't have the ability to talk to all 180,000 people we represent in our respective districts. And so, you know, you still got to go out there and make the case, and that's what I've been doing. I spent about, oh, eight miles going door to door yesterday in the city of Austin, and I uh, probably, hopefully if the rain holds off, going to be in Wisconsin Rapids this, this afternoon going door to door talking to folks, and that's going to be the mantra between now and November 5th. Getting a good workout at the very least, right? <laughs> oh, absolutely. This is uh Hey, if you want a really good diet plan, <laughs> um, go out and campaign for uh, public office because I tell you, you get to eat like a horse. The real, the real challenge is, is once the campaign's over, you got to remind yourself mm. that, yeah, you can't, uh, 
keep putting away the uh, the hamburgers <laughs> or whatever you can get your hands on because mm-hmm. you're starving at the end of the day. You have a very unique and cool opportunity coming up. You're going to be speaking with an Irish ambassador. Can you tell us about that? Yeah, I'm really excited about this. So uh, earlier in this last legislative session, we created the the Irish caucus. So a number of us who are of Irish descent and passed legislation to actually increase trade opportunities between Wisconsin and Ireland. And so last year, I had had the chance to um, a number of us had dinner with the Irish Consulate General out of the Chicago office and a great guy. And uh, really looking forward to this Saturday because uh, the the ambassador uh, to the United States from Ireland is going to be at Milwaukee's Irish Fest. So a number of us are going to go go down and uh, have a reception with her and talk about how we can continue to strengthen our relationship between Wisconsin and Ireland. And this is really an opportunity for us to highlight some of our our egg exports and uh, hopefully help some of our farmers and uh, other manufacturers here in the state open up new markets. And uh, I'm really excited to strengthen this partnership. And, you know, anytime you get a chance to go down to Irish Fest, it's a, it's a win-win. Yeah, I, I will say journalistically, as a uh, strong Italian, any Irish Fest you can get to, go to it, everybody. It, it's a blast. You'll have fun, especially uh, the, the ones that we would have in Chicago and those. You'd show up at all of them. Uh, and you mentioned a couple of really key points to this. One, it's just unique and it's cool. We don't get these opportunities very often. But uh, certainly the idea of strengthening our connections with other countries and how vital that is, not just to Wisconsin, but to America and us going forward. Export, import, this is the way of the world. We need these relationships and we need them strong absolutely and it's through these types of partnerships that you know we can continue to make the case that you know wisconsin has a lot of things to offer and you know obviously the the, the folks in ireland they might be biased towards uh carry butter but i i do think we can make a case <laughs> that we've got some great wisconsin cheeses and other types of products that uh could find a home over in their country and and vice versa they they have a lot to offer us and and so I, I'm really excited. Uh, as you said, this is a rare opportunity, especially for a state legislator to, you know, sit down with the international ambassador. And uh, I'm just so thankful it's Ireland because my wife and I, we took our honeymoon over in Ireland and took a second trip with the following year. And I, I tell you, you know, based on limited experience going to other countries, I got to say, you know, Ireland is the Wisconsin of the EU. <laughs> I, that's very fitting. That's very fitting. It, it's uh, one of those places on the, on the bucket list you just got to go to. It looks so beautiful over there. Uh, you mentioned that you've been uh, traveling, doing a lot of running around and everything. And yesterday uh, you attended a Day of Legislators event at Volk Field in Juneau County. Can you tell us uh, what you guys discussed and how that went? Yeah, this was another really fun and exciting opportunity. And now that uh, Volk Field and Camp Douglas are uh, going to be in the 24th Senate District, I felt obligated to go since it's now in my backyard. And uh, we really got the opportunity to be briefed by the leadership of Volk Field, especially right now as they conduct Northern Lightning, where they're doing military exercises over uh, central Wisconsin right now. And really to talk about the, how critical the mission is of Volk Field for our Air National Guard and even some of our active duty um, Air Force units, where Volk Field provides a lot of unique opportunities that many other Air Force bases and National National Air Guard bases don't have the capabilities. And so um, it's really critical, especially right now, one of the main focuses that they're training for is, are potential conflicts with China and Taiwan. And so, you know, think about that. Here in central Wisconsin, we are really providing training opportunities for um, our airmen and women to be combat ready if necessary but the big takeaway was is that you know they want to have peace through strength and so these missions are are extremely important to national security and world peace and what was really cool about this is that we got to see some of our most advanced uh warplanes take off so some of the the new f-35s which again is extremely unique it's one of the only few uh now, or uh, Air National Guard units that have received straight from the factory the most advanced technological planes in our in our arsenal, the F-35s, and seeing these take off, I mean, man, you know, we're we're sitting off off to the side of the tarmac, and as these jets take off, you could feel it in your chest, and all I could think to myself was, 
that that is freedom right there. And mm. um, it, it was a really, really great day. Really good to hear. And speaking of freedom, you attended the ceremony for Vietnam War U.S. Army veteran Lawrence McCann uh, as he was awarded the Bronze Star. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, this is uh, truly a credit to Congressman Van Orden's office. So uh, Mr. McCann was a, a Vietnam War veteran who actually was supposed to receive the Bronze Star for acts of bravery, and it took him 52 years to uh, receive his medal. There was apparently a the paperwork got lost somewhere in the Department of Defense, and uh, Congressman Van Orden and his staff worked with the DOD to, um, you know, make sure that they got uh, the paperwork corrected and received his medal. And, you know, what was so unique about this, it was held down at the Adams VFW, and, you know, Lawrence was there with his family. And this is, I think, so telling about our veterans is that, you know, it seemed pretty clear that he didn't really want to have a big show about this, but... Um, you know, as Congressman Van Orden had stated, this was really about, you know, recognizing his bravery and his achievements from his service in the war. But also, more importantly, this was an opportunity for his family to be honored. And, you know, it, it was really humbling to be a part of this experience and, and hats off to uh, Lawrence and his family. And, and he truly is an American hero. We're speaking with State Senator Patrick Teston right now. And, sir, I wanted to bring attention to uh, how certain businesses in our area can now apply for the Buy Local, Buy Wisconsin grant funding. I wanted to bring some attention to this, especially uh, the next time you'll join us, the deadline will have passed. So I wanted to touch on this one, if you don't mind. Yeah, so uh, the opportunity here to buy local. Um, this is a program that I believe is being run through uh, DATCAP, and it's really, again, an opportunity to highlight local businesses and local products. And this has been a very successful program over the years, and we want to continue to make sure that individuals take advantage of it right here. And, um, you know, it's a grant for up to $200,000. And so you have until September 9th to apply and uh, encourage people if they want to learn more, they can go to uh, – uh, the DATCAP homepage. So that's the Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection to learn more. And uh, if anyone needs help navigating the grant process, feel free to reach out to my office and we'll be more more than willing to help out. Yeah, that's a, a great idea and a great uh, program to have installed. And I appreciate you bringing attention to that. And the, a grant writing can be a little bit difficult, can be a little bit tricky. So feel free to reach out to the, the senator's staff or wherever you uh, need to to find out more about that. Uh, I imagine that you've had to make some room wherever you put your awards le recently, sir. You've had a couple of uh, nice nominations recently and or awards given. And you were named the 2023-24 Friend of Home Health Care uh, by the Wisconsin Association of Home Health Care. I know how much this, uh, in this certain topic means to you. Uh, what did it mean to you to receive that and the work that you've been doing on that front? Well, I, I really thankful to, to get the award, but really it's not about receiving the award. It's about doing what's right. And home health care is one of these where, especially, you know, since the pandemic has really highlighted the need that, you know, we need more home health care workforce. And, uh, you know, throughout the pandemic, federal funds were used uh, in this last budget. We decided to continue to increase that instead of using federal funds, put in a state investment in there of 5%. And it's really about making sure that, you know, we're providing opportunities for people to get better within their own homes, because one of the, one of the places that's most expensive to get better if you're not doing well is in a hospital. And so that's one of the challenges that we've seen in the last couple of years that, that it has put a tremendous strain on our healthcare system is that as the, the level of acuity and the complication of cases has risen, Oftentimes, our nursing homes right now that are strapped for even entry-level workers such as CNAs don't have the ability to take care of these individuals, and so folks have had to stay in hospitals longer, but home health care workers in this program provide different pathways and opportunities for people to get out of a hospital and receive care within their own home, where oftentimes they get better results, and it also frees up more beds for those individuals who probably do need a higher uh, level of acuity of care. And it seems like something that, uh, well, all great work and, and great points, um, a, a field and, a, and something that is going to continue to be worked on uh, as we go forward here with some of the, you know, uh, more of our rural areas uh, definitely needing more, more attention with that. Absolutely. And that's going to be a continued point of emphasis for me and a number of my colleagues uh, who serve on the Joint Finance Committee going into this next budget is 
doing what we can to provide affordability and access to access to care, especially in underserved areas, just such as we deal with here in central and western Wisconsin and even up in uh, other parts of the state. So, um, you know, we're going to continue to think outside the box and take a look at what's working, what's not, and what can we do better or differently to ensure that we're providing better patient outcomes and also making sure that our medical professionals who service these individuals on the front lines have the tools and resources they need to get people back on their feet and, and hopefully um, back into the workforce or doing whatever they need to do to get better and stay healthy. Mm-hmm. We have a fun show we get to do here once a month on Midday Magazine. Let's talk real estate with our friends at Cole Banker. And uh, over the years, I worked with JR Seward from over there and learned so much about real estate and the industry. But the, the, the main thing that I think came up almost every month with JR was inventory and building in Wisconsin. And recently, you were honored to be a recipient of a Building Wisconsin Award from the Associated Builders and Contractors of Wisconsin. Uh, uh, congratulations on that for one. And for why do you, why do we, did you receive this award and what does it mean to you? Well, you hit the nail on the head. So we have a significant housing shortage here in the state and the stock that's available, it's limited. Oftentimes when houses go on the market, um, you know, they, they get sold and bought right away. And um, the other challenges that we face right now is a lot of our housing stock, our housing stock is, is aging, no different than our, our population here in the state, but the vast majority of our housing stock was built before the 1980s. And so, you know, as homes age, they no different than people, problems arise. And so one of the things that we did in this last state budget made significant investments uh, to the tune of over half a billion dollars to provide and pass the housing package, whether it's dealing with low income housing, workforce housing, making sure that some of these projects that in years past and these programs in years past when, you know, funds have been available, oftentimes larger municipalities took advantage of this, leaving communities like Wisconsin Rapids and others in the dust. And knowing that, you know, we we face some of the same challenges of these larger communities, well, we need to make sure that everyone's getting an opportunity to take advantage of these programs because, you know, we need housing too. As we're all well aware, we have a workforce shortage here in the state, and every employer is starving for workers. But, you know, it doesn't do us any good if we've got jobs available in places like central Wisconsin if those individuals don't have a place to live. And so, you know, passing the the housing package that we did, um, you know, is hopefully going to release some of the bottlenecks that we face within our real estate um, and housing, housing shortage that we have here in the state. And so... Uh, I was appreciative from ABC to receive the award, along with a number of my other colleagues. And again, there's more to, more work to do on that front. Mm-hmm. And, uh, sir, I really appreciate the time you joining us every month. We always have a good conversation, and I uh, thank you very much for that. Uh, I want to wrap up with uh, a little more fun and on the job series. You were recently at Wisconsin River Meats. How did that go? How did you get your hands a little bit in the dirt there or in the meat, I suppose? <laughs> <laughs> Well, let's just say uh, Wisconsin River Meats, it is a, a, an awesome, awesome store and meat processing facility. And uh, John Hamm, and, and I'm not even joking, that's his name, John Hamm. Great <laughs> I was guy. just going to ask. Like, like, <laughs> that's great. I, I can't think of a more appropriate name for someone to, to own a uh, meat processing facility. But let me tell you, that is one place you never want to go in on with an empty stomach. Mm. Um you know, they had me making brats in the back, which it's it's an art form. I did okay, uh, but it was really neat because they do all sorts of different products, meat products and sausages, land Jaegers, you name it. Um, and they also do hand cut steaks and roast and and uh, process uh, beef and pigs and chickens, you name it. Deer during deer season, they process over four thousand deer. And uh, what was really cool for me is I got to hang. Uh, some sides of beef. I kind of felt like Rocky in, yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> uh, in the cooler. But, uh, you know, it, it was really great because, again, you know, something that we learned from the height of the pandemic is just how fragile our food supply chain was. And I, I still remember going into my local grocery store when there was hardly any meat in the cooler. And it was it was really scary. And, you know, some of our smaller processors like Wisconsin River Meats that helped fill that void because, as John was telling me throughout the course of the day, you know, he was receiving requests from grocery stores all around the area, whether it was in Toma or Sparta or Black River Falls. You know, hey, can you uh, can you process a, a couple of cows for us? And 
you know, his staff really stepped up in a big way and, and uh, ensured that people had access to protein sources like beef and poultry and pork. And so, uh, you know, that's, again, something that we, we took away in the last couple of budgets, providing grants for our meat processors that through grants provided through DACAP to ensure that we have that, that strength and re- resiliency if, God forbid, we find ourselves in another crisis or situation like we did during the height of uh, COVID-19. And as I joked with my wife, uh, when I got home, I told her, don't be mad. This is probably one of the first on the jobs where I probably spent way more than I actually earned for the day. <laughs> but uh, it was worth it because uh, I came home with a, a bunch of brats and, and snack sticks and and. Let me tell you, in the summer months after going door to door, there's nothing better than sitting down and having a good Wisconsin brought on the grill. Mm. It's a nice reminder, too, to buy local, support local, and look for that Wisconsin-made label uh, and support our local businesses here in state. Uh, Looking forward to hearing about the next On the Job series, talking with you next month. Thank you so much for the time, sir. If people have follow-up questions, want to know more about some of what we talked about, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, if anyone needs to get a hold of my office, give us a call at 608-266-3123. Uh, shoot us an email at sen.mylastnametestin at legis.wi.gov. Follow us on social media. And, uh, you know, if you see me out and about on the campaign trail, if I'm not at your door, if you see me out walking the street, feel free to stop stop me anytime. And, you know, let me know what's on your mind. If you've got thoughts, ideas, concerns, and I'll be sure to take that back with me to Madison. Uh, safe travels out there. Thanks again for the time. We'll talk again next month, sir. Awesome. Thanks, James. Thank you. Well, more Midday Magazine coming up for you right here at 97.5 FM, 1320 AM, WFHR, locally grown radio.